All right, I think we can start now. So we in this particular class, we are going to talk about cloud computing and we will discuss about the Azure, who is providing cloud computing services. So what is a cloud computing? So this is on-demand delivery of computer power, okay, or databases, storage, application, or IT resources. This is providing a simple way to access server, storage, database, or a broad set of application services over the internet. So that's what a cloud computing provided. Cloud computing also provide the, uh, I mean, cloud computing services is provided by such platform like Amazon Web Services, or it is also provided by Azure, okay? And they they are providing these services over the internet. So let's let's start. So yeah. So as I mentioned, that what is a cloud computing? So cloud computing is basically this is providing on-demand delivery of compute resources, okay, or databases. So for example, if we required a a computer to perform a task. So instead of buying that computer, what we can do, we can take the cloud services and there I can create the computer machine, which is virtual machine. And we can access that virtual machine over the phone, okay, or maybe any resources which is providing internet connectivity. And then we can perform our job over the cloud itself. Similarly, if we require a database to store the data, so we don't need to purchase a database server we can just go and we can use the cloud-based database and there we can store the databases. And even though application as well, let's say we required some application to perform, you know, a kind of a job. So you can take example, let's say I just want to perform any graphics job. And for that we required a kind of a application which is processing graphics so that we can just go on the cloud and we can purchase that that application or we can use that application so this is very simple if we are going to use a cloud computing so we can ask for resources on demand basis whatever resources we required whether application whether computer whether storage whether the databases, we can take it on the on-demand basis. So a cloud computing model, so cloud computing model, we have three type model, infrastructure as a services, where we ask the cloud provider to provision the infrastructure for us. And there we can install our application, our operating system, et cetera. So you can take example of infrastructure as a services like virtual machine. So for example, we required a computer with two core of processor and four GB of RAM or eight GB of RAM. So directly we can go to cloud provider portal. There we can select our infrastructure and we can make that infrastructure up. On the top of that infrastructure, we can deploy operating system. We can deploy the application, right? So that is known as an infrastructure as a services. Let's say I don't require infrastructure, but I require a platform to host our services. So you can take example, I have a website which is created on PHP and we required some infrastructure on which I can host that PHP website, but not the computer. So what we can do, we can use the application which is supporting the PHP hosting, for example, Apache server, etc. We can purchase from you know, service provider itself and there we can host our application. Let's say I don't have, I don't require infrastructure or application, right? So I don't require past services or IAS services. On that case, what we can do, what we require, we require application itself. So on that case, we can go for SaaS services. So you can take example, Photoshop, uh, sorry, for, you can take example, Dropbox is a, a kind of application which is providing the services to store the file, photos, etc. Gmail is again SaaS based services, okay? So those are the application, right? So we have three model of the services. Infrastructure is the services. We can we are, we can provision the infrastructure. We have platform as a services. We don't want to provision infrastructure, but we just want to use the platform. On that cases, we can go for pass. And we have final SaaS that is known as a software as a services. 
So there we can only use the application directly. We can use the application, ready-made application. So SAS would be used by end user. PaaS can be used by application developer and uh, infrastructure as a services that can be used by infrastructure, uh, infrastructure team or network architects. Now, if I talk about cloud computing deployment model, so we have a three, four type of deployment, public cloud, where everyone can deploy their resources. For example, AWS Azure, that's a public cloud. We have private cloud, where only the company can deploy its resources. Okay, so for example, Toyota has their own cloud, so they can deploy their resources on their cloud. And then we have community cloud. Community cloud is nothing, but that is a collaboration of two, three company. They are using this, okay, where th those two, three company has the access of their community cloud. And finally, we have hybrid cloud. Hybrid co cloud is a combination of public and private cloud. So Azure is providing the experience of a hybrid cloud as well. Like uh, if someone want to use uh, their cloud as a private services, they can go for the private cloud. And if someone want to use their cloud as a public cloud, they can use the Azure public cloud. Moving to next, we are going to talk about Azure learning path. If you want to learn Azure cloud, so you can go for the fundamental certification, then you can go for associate level certification and finally expert level certification. These are the certification stages we have. In this particular course, we are going to cover Azure fundamentals. What is Azure? What is their um, terminology, etc. Then we will talk about virtual machine storage. When we are, then we will talk about Azure networking. We will discuss about network part over here. Then we will talk about implementation of platform protection, how you can protect the platform. For example, if you have created a virtual machine and if you want to protect that virtual machine, so you can use Azure based platform protection services. For example, uh, Azure based firewall, Azure based DDoS profile, Azure based, you know, uh, NSG, network security group, etc. So that you can use for platform protection. We will talk about the secure data, how you can secure data. So here we are going to talk about the encryption, decryption, and the storage key, and how you can protect the application. Then we are going to talk about the Azure application services, where we can protect, where we can use WAF, etc. So we, we will discuss Azure WAF, etc. over here. Then we will talk about the managed security operation on day-to-day -day basis, how you can manage your security operation. For example, you're required to allow some services, deny some services. So how you can manage that, that thing, we will talk about here in the managed security operation. Then we will talk about secure identities and access. So here we are going to talk about uh, how we can create a different type of user, how we can provide them different role. For example, in the Azure, you have a different type of services and that different type of services would be consumed or used by different type of group. For example, those services is used by HR as well, IT people as well, and that services used by the developer as well. So how we can create different role okay and we can provide them access so that they would be able to access only their area services not other area services so we can manage that through using identity and access management okay basically this is nothing nothing but authentication and authorization and their accounting so for example if someone is trying to access any particular services first of all we should check that way that he's eligible to access that services or not if it is eligible authenticate him and after that, in that services, how many part he can access, whether all or partial, so that we can control through Azure, uh, uh, secure identity and access services. Then further, we have deploy and manage Azure compute resources. Here we are going to talk about different compute resources, which is server-based and serverless compute resources that we are going to discuss over here. Then we are going to talk about monitor and troubleshooting Azure solution. So if you want to monitor, for example, you have deployed virtual machine, okay, in the Azure and their performance you want to monitor, then how you can monitor the performance, how you can troubleshoot their problem, 
and what all the solution available for example azure monitor etc so we are going to talk over here and finally we are going to talk about the secure azure solution so what are the secure azure solution we have i mean security part we are going to cover here we will cover WAF, we will cover vault we will cover um, uh, you know uh, secret services all those things we are going to cover azure security center that would be we, we are going to cover under the secure azure solution now so if you want to work on the azure what you required so basically you required a, a, a an account okay what is account azure resources you can access through portal.azure.com so you need to make sure that in this portal.azure.com you should have account for example i have account over here okay and then i can use the azure services so if you have account okay by default azure is going to provide 200 dollar free credential credits so that you can use azure services you can test that and this service would be I mean, this $200 would be valid for one month. However, rest of free services you can use post expiring of these $200 credential. So if you just want to create a free trial account, you just create Azure account. After that, you can click on this start. And there you can provide relevant information and you can create a free account. So how you just want to use the Azure you want to use start free or you want to start pay as you go what is the free and what is the pay as you go that means whatever the services go you are going to use over here right whatever the services you are going to use over here for that services only you need to pay so you can go for the pay as you go when I, when i say pay as you go so for example let's say you have created a virtual machine and that virtual machine you have used for one minute or five minutes. So you have to pay for that, okay? Whatever the charges for the virtual machine, you have to pay for that for a one minute or five minute or one hour. If you are going to use a free, so here you are going to get limited services. For example, you can create compute resources, you can create databases, but you can't use advanced services in the free resources. Okay, so both option you have, you can use a free, that is a $200 credential for a month, credit for a month or pay as you go. Okay, so if you want to use start as a free, okay, because you are in learning phase, so you can click on start as a free. There you can provide the information, the basic information, for example, uh, let me, Alter, alternate email ID or something. Oh, sorry, unfortunately, I'm not able to receive email. Anyway, so I, I don't want to create an account right now. Okay, but I would create it later. So now I'm going to talk about next things. For example, in Azure, if you are learning this, you are going to get a lot of uh, different type of concept about Azure and cloud computing. So let me just talk about them. So what, what the benefit you are going to see when you are using a cloud services? So let's understand that if someone is asked, why not use on-premises services? Why we should go for uh, Azure cloud? So on that case, it's what you can do. You can you can see the benefits. So let me just talk about the benefits if you are going to use Azure services. So benefits are, you know, high availability, first things. So, you know, when you are using a Azure services, for all services, those services are in a high availability mode. That means if you are... Uh, if you are using their services, that means if you have any virtual machine, so that virtual machine would be up. You don't need to care about that, whether what, what is happening to the underlying platform. Okay, that would be always up. However, you are if you are using high availability, still you need to think about the backup. 
high performance and load balancing okay you need to talk about that other thing scalability if you are using azure or cloud services so the benefit if you want to scale up you can do that so i'm taking a simple example of scaling scale up let's say you have a virtual machine you have created a vm and that vm has two core processor 4 gb ram you have a server this is a server that you have created on azure so let's say in starting this server was enough but now you have you required more computing power on this and you just want to scale up okay so in real world what you have to do you have to purchase another uh, you know high capacity processor but in the azure if you are using a cloud computing so you can just request a cloud provider to upgrade to 4 gb uh, ram to 8 gb and two core processor to four core processor so that upgrade would happen immediately so if you want to scale up the resources or increase or decrease the workload resources that means server resources that you can do easily so that scale up services you are going to get into the azure what next you are going to get into the azure elasticity so elasticity again if you want to scale out or scale in you can do that okay so if you want to put additional resources not on the same resources let's say you have a one server right now with two core processor and 4 gb of ram and now what you want to do you just want to add one more server with the same capacity or different capacity and that is also possible so you can not only scale up in a vertical but you can also scale up in the horizontal or increase decrease in the horizontal what is a vertical that means on the same server if you want to increase the resources you can increase the resources on the same server and if you want to deploy additional server that is a horizontal resources that also you can do right now i'm moving to next on the azure and here we are going to talk about agility so here if you want to provision or deprovision the services this is providing self services to do that and whatever the changes you are going to make that changes would be immediately affected is not going to take long time it would be uh, you know reflecting immediately so that is lt we have okay so you can provision or deprovision the services in a minute using a self services self services is what you can use azure portal and there you can deploy these services immediately it is providing disaster recovery what is disaster recovery let's say there is a data center you have a, you have a virtual machine hosted in a data center and that data center is completely down let's say you have hosted your virtual machine in a india data center and entire region is down so you would be able to access your resources from different location from different data center so that's what it is providing and then we have a capital expense so we will talk about this capital expense what is the capital expense so whenever you are planning to use any services you are thinking about that how much capital you are going to expend on that so what is up, up fund upfront uh, cost that means when you are using the services what is the service cost what is the maintenance cost okay how much much it is going to decrease the time okay how much much it is going to decrease the resources all those things if you are think about that capex in in cloud services so it is really low than you know on premises because let's say if you are going to use cloud services okay and if you want to calculate upfront up upfront cost for cloud services so on that cases you can see that maybe you required a few dollar to spend to purchase a machine on the cloud but if you go on the on the on premises maybe you required you know 100 dollar for that at least to purchase a, a physical machine right so you can plan the capex accordingly also this is a self services if you need to maintain anything 
you just go on the portal and you can maintain the backup everything you can maintain that and to provision a machine it is going to take very less time that's why a capital expenses for the services if you are using in in cloud that is really less than the on premises moving to next we will talk about the operational expenditure which is known as the opex so that is the ongoing cost okay so we will think about that what is the ongoing cost if you are going to use that services how much you are going to pay for that so if you are going to use on premises serv services so maybe operational cost is really high than the cloud okay so in cloud we have consumption consumption based model so what is this this means so basically in a cloud if you are going to use the services so you are going to pay only for the services which you are using okay if you are not using so there is no upfront cost cost okay immediately you don't need to pay you need to pay the bill on the monthly basis and for only the services that you are using and if i talk about cloud category so as i mentioned earlier we have infrastructure as a services platform as a services software as a services these are the main services we have a backup as a services database as a services and identity as a services these are the additional type of services that we can use yeah so as i told that we have different type of services infrastructure as a services platform as a services software as a services infrastructure as a services we can purchase the infrastructure for example virtual machine and there we can deploy the uh, different resources on that for example operating system then application and then we can use that infrastructure however in a platform as a services you don't need to purchase the infrastructure but you need to take purchase a platform so for example let's say you just want to deploy a website which is created on .NET. so for that we can go and purchase you know uh, iis as a services okay which is iis server and then finally we have software as a services so here we can we don't need to take a paired platform or we don't need to deploy any infrastructure we can directly go and we can purchase the application use the application as per user spaces we can give the pay the money so for example let's say i need to store some data on the cloud and you can take example of dropbox so we can directly approach to do, uh, dropbox and we can ask for the storage that we required when we storage monthly how much you are going to pay we can go and purchase the backup as a services and similarly if we require the databases okay so we can go and purchase databases as a services similarly we required identity as a services we required to authenticate user okay let's say somebody is trying to access our website and for that we require to implement the authentication so we can use identity as a services we can purchase identity as a services and we can use that you can take example of you know two factor authentication when you are accessing your application so for that application it is you are going to provide username and password and further it is integrated to any two factor authentication services which is providing the sms services you are getting the sms from there so you can take example of identity as a services like that then further we are going to talk about on premises environment so in on premises we have a hardware we have a building we have environmental control we have security and we require a skilled personnel on that so if you want to deploy any services or if you want to create data center for the on premises so we require all these things to operate right but if you want want use infrastructure as a services we don't require anything like that okay so for example if you have a data center on on premises so you require to purchase hardware for example racks server etc and that hardware you are going to install somewhere so for that we require a building then we require environmental control for example a cooling power you need to uh, you know think about that and you require a security who can access who cannot access your building or hardware closet 
that you can see over here. And further, you require a skilled person to operate those things. In a cloud, if you are using infrastructure as a services, all the hosting provided by the cloud service provider. Okay, service provider would be responsible for the, their infrastructure and environmental control, etc. Customer is only responsible for the operating system, their operating system configuration and the backup it only. And you would pay only for what you use. If you are going to use platform as a services, so you are, there you are going to get pre-built services provided by the service provider. And the service provider would be responsible for their infrastructure, operating system, management, and the backup, et cetera. C customer is only responsible for their application. If there is any changes on the application, then the customer would be responsible. But if you are using a software as a services, customer responsibility is very less on this. Software as a services is currently hosted on the cloud service provider. That, that service would be hosted on the cloud service provider. And for that services, you require a subscription. If you want to use that services, for that you require subscription. And once you subscribe, okay, you can use the application. So you would be only, uh, I mean, the service provider responsible to the maintain the application and the infrastructure where application is deployed. So I can take example, let's say I required a, you know, email services, what I required, I required a email server so that I can host a few emails. So let's say I have three, four user. And for the, that, I just want to provide email services. So let's say I have a user, user A in my office, user B, user C, I have three user, okay. And those three user want to have their email ID. So for example, user A want to have ID, user A at the rate netminion.net. user b at the rate netminion.net and user c at the rate netminion.net what i required i require an email id which can be which can have a domain netminion.net so what i can do instead of deploying our own exchange server we can do this using exchange server i can deploy exchange server okay and there i can host the email this is the traditional way to do that i don't want to use this because for that what we required we required hardware first first of all we required a hardware then we required operating system then we required exchange application and then we required a person who can manage that exchange application, who can configure that exchange application. So we have to pay a lot of things. I don't want to use that. What I just want to do, I just want to, I just go and purchase the cloud services. So you might heard about the Office 365. I would reach to the Microsoft and I would ask, go and create one email server for me. So they would be going to provide Office 365 services. They are going to create one exchange server for me. And then, I mean, one exchange application. And there I can create email boxes in the Office 365 only. So this Office 365 for me, what? This is a SaaS services. I don't need to worry about anything that this Office 365 deployed where I don't need to worry about that. Who is maintaining that? I don't need to worry about that. I can just go and I can consume the services. Okay, so there are so many SaaS application like this. You can you can see nowadays. And for different solution, there are different SaaS services that you can use as per your choice. And there are different SaaS provider as well. Okay, now I'm moving to next. So yeah, on premises, we have Exchange. On the cloud, we have Office 365. On, on the on premises, you are going to maintain SQL database. On the cloud, on the Azure, we have SQL, Azure SQL, Azure machines as an infrastructure as services. And the physical server is uh, what? Azure virtual machine. So these are the some example of 
you know, different type of services. Uh, this Office 365 is example of SaaS. Azure SQL is example of PaaS. Azure Virtual Machine is example of infrastructure as services. And that would be deployed on the physical server. Here is the responsibility on different type of services. Shared, we have a shared responsibility model. Okay. And then in shared responsibility, we have software as a services, platform as a services, infrastructure as a services, on prem services. We have different type of services, right? And you can see here uh, information and data would be maintained by the SaaS application provider. Okay. Who, who is responsible for that? Customer is, is responsible for that. If we to maintain their information and data in the SaaS as well, PaaS as well, infrastructure as a services as well, and on the on premises as well. We have another type of uh, things like device. If user is using device like mobile and PC on the SaaS, from where he is connecting, he would be responsible right and you know account and identity would be managed by the you know customer only identity and you know directory infrastructure would be managed by this is a shared responsibility some of part would be managed by the customer and some of part would be managed by the service provider so in our case service provider would be microsoft because he is using azure right in a platform as a services, some would, some some of the part would be managed by you know platform provider, and some of the part would be managed by the cloud provider, right? But on the infrastructure as a services, this part identity and you know in identity and directory infrastructure would be managed by the customer itself. On on premises case, everything would be managed by the customer. So. Overall, you can see that if you are using SaaS or PaaS or infrastructure as services, you can see most of the responsibility on the customer would be on the infrastructure as a code. But in the PaaS, there would be, you know, little lesser and in here, at least things would be managed by the customer. Most of the things would be managed by the service provider. Right, so let me just go to next part and let me just stop here. So we have a serverless system. So there are, you know, in Azure, you can have a serverless services and that serverless services would be for the developer mostly because for developer, let's say developer want to test their application. So they don't want to go in that way they, they need to deploy the server over the cloud. Okay. What they just want to do, they just want to build an application and run the application over the cloud and whatever the resources would required, the cloud should provision that. And for that, we have a serverless services. So we have a serverless services, which is provided by cloud provider. And this serverless services is auto provisioning, is scalable, and it is manageable. Okay. So, for example, Azure function is an example of serverless services. Okay. This is a faster. Okay. I mean, in compared to other services, this is fastest, and this can be used by the developer only. So, let's say I have a code. I have a created a code, and that code I just want to test over the Azure. I don't need to deploy any service server over there. I just go and run Azure function. This server we can use Azure function. I mean, I can run my code with Azure function, and it would be it would be you know running on the serverless services. Now moving to next, we are going to talk about public and private cloud. We have already talked about that. So public cloud organization on that, okay, and maintain their own data. Sorry, that's a private cloud. And the organization would be responsible for their hardware, software, building and security, 
our training personals okay so this is for the single client or single organization we have public cloud we this would be maintained by the service provider so service provider is going to on and maintain the data center they ser the service provider would be responsible to maintain the hardware and software building and its security or to train their personnel who is whoever doing the job for the service provider cloud service provider and that would be public access okay so public access would be allowed on that and we would have a multiple client on the public cloud so for example amar can be there or nursi can be there they can use this public cloud any customer can use that let's say here is amar who just want to use this amar can use this or you know nursi if nursi want to use this nursi can use this right now let's move to next we have a hybrid cloud and hybrid cloud is a combination of private and public cloud organization can use this okay so hybrid cloud their organization can use a specific location as well and organization can use the public offering as well so these are the difference between public cloud and private cloud private cloud would be used by single client how your public cloud would be used by multiple cloud and the hybrid cloud would be combined both public and private cloud okay so if we talk about the private cloud or public cloud so basically private cloud would be specific to organization okay so that's all about the first day of azure class if you have any question or doubt please let me know and i would recommend to go and create your account on the cloud so if you want to create your account on the cloud first you required what just give me a minute first you should have a account id in the in the microsoft so let me just show you if you want to create your account on the cloud so you can go here and you can type portal.azure.com and there you can register yourself if you don't have any id so you can register yourself you can sign in using github account if you have account in github you can use that account or you have a different sign in option as well you can use your uh, windows id as well for the login so better if you have email id on skype or, or, or you know email id on outlook you can use that if you don't have so you can create one so here is the option let's say i don't have then i would create this so you can click on create and it is going to ask you create microsoft account what the account name you want to Put. so you can click here get new email address and it is going to tell you that whether you want to create email on outlook.com or hotmail.com so let's say i just want to create email on outlook.com i would go and i would create so for example amar kumar 7956415231 like this i would click there I would give the password. And then I would click on next. We can decide what country and date of birth, etc. And then once account would be created, then we can go for the free credit. For free credit, you're required to have a credit card. So it is going to detect one dollar or one rupees from your credit card. And that it is going to give you back in few days and you can use the free credit services for 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 your lab 